there, I'm Stacy, the encaustic mixed media artist behind Studio Stacy. This week I have a, another studio vlog coming at you, so let's see where the week takes us. I am going to be working on a large painting this week. Um, like probably the next couple days I would think it'll take me, but first I have a, a huge mess that needs cleaned up from last painting and last week. to talk real briefly about how I clean my griddle or the paint palette here and as you guys know I like to mix my colors on the paint palette so I can have quite a bit of excess wax on the paint palette left over from each painting and rather than waste that wax I like to collect it into the drip tray here I think that the bees work way too hard for me to just put this into the trash can so what I do is I collect it in the drip tray and then I will re-melt that down and it makes really nice, pretty, typically neutral grays or browns. Also being environmentally friendly and not using any paper towels, I use an old sheet that we cut up and obviously don't use anymore. So I use that to wipe off the griddle. And then when that gets just slightly too messy, then I will throw it away. But for now, I keep it in my paint cart here with the brushes and everything stays nice and organized and of course, environmentally friendly. All right, got that all cleaned up and I have the encaustic medium all heated up, ready to go. I think probably all I'm gonna get done on this painting today is the layers of the clear encaustic medium. Um, I have a couple things going on this afternoon that I have to um, get done and so I'll probably just work another hour or so on this painting and then I'll probably call it quits in the studio but let's see how far we get. <laughs> Before I stop for the day, I wanted to discuss one more thing, and that is the cleanup of my table. So it gets quite messy and full of drips, and you may be wondering why it gets that way. And that is because when I paint, I don't tend to, I, I load up my brush and then I don't get it directly onto the painting. I kind of go around the painting to the area that I want it to go to. So that way I'm not dripping wax onto the painting, but what happens is it drips wax onto my glass work table. Also, when I'm flipping the painting around in several different directions, when I'm putting the first several layers of the clear encaustic medium on, it drips off of those edges. Um, and then because I'm flipping it around in several different ways, I have drips all over the table. So I'm going to show you how I clean up the table now and also how I don't waste any of this wax. That was the whole point of me jumping on here. Um, I'm very much into not wasting the wax. Okay, so I try to start with a pretty clean glass top surface, meaning there's no, not a bunch of dust and debris on here before I start painting. And that way, the wax that is stuck to this table, I just use a razor blade here, hopefully you can see that, and it just scrapes off of the glass because it's a glass top. So just kind of scrapes right off. And the, hopefully you can see that if it focuses, the wax is pretty clean. Now I don't put it back into my clear medium, but I do put it into these little drip trays. And then when I melt that wax down to make a new color, it has some clear medium in it.
Hey there, uh, it's been a couple days since I picked up the camera and uh, don't mind the very messy hair or the huge mess behind me. Um, for some reason, I don't know, I just decided to clean today. I don't know if it's what's going on in this crazy world or what, but I just felt the need to kind of not think about anything and just like do some purging and some cleaning. And so I thought, while I was doing that, I would show you what I'm cleaning and why kind of I have it in my studio. Okay, so I'm cleaning this area here. And as you can tell, it is completely cleared off. But I call this, um, it could be an altar, could be a shrine, depending on, you know, what you'd like to call it. But it's kind of where I keep all of my things that just have certain meanings to me. And for example, this um, little table runner here, I quilted in a beginner quilting class. And for some reason, it fit this piece perfectly like it was meant to be. And I'm just really proud of it. Uh, it was the first piece I've ever quilted. So it is there on my altar. That's the first piece. Okay, I have it set back up now. And so I thought I would just show you a few things. On these little pine cones I have up here because my grandma and mom used to collect pine cones. So these remind me of my mom and my grandma. This also <laughs> reminds me of my grandma. Um, if you're of a certain age, you will recognize this little tomato strawberry pincushion. And my grandma, this actually was my grandma's. So, and then. <laughs> This silly little Care Bear that some people might think is frightening, my grandma actually made. She was a very good seamstress. This little van my husband got for me. And someday I would like to own a van and travel in a van selling my artwork. Then, of course, and I love Matthew Flip Flop because that's my husband's name. So, you know, gotta have that. This little guy is battery operated and it lights up inside and my sister and I actually made this with my great aunt. And then um, just some old vintage paintbrushes because why not? These are sun catchers that my sister and I made. Thistle um, is, uh, my mom loved thistle, Scotland and um, things like that. So thistle. This here is a um, leaf that a blacksmith made me in Vermont, and he is a very special friend of the family and just wonderful person, so that's why that is there. Then, uh, speaking of Vermont, I have a little maple syrup tap, and for those of you that don't know, we used to live in Vermont, so I have a fondness of Vermont. And this, again, might creep some people out, but they're snake skins. And I don't know, I, I have a fascination with snake skins and the way snakes can just lose their skin, shed their skin. Then back here, I have a vintage um, printing block, of course an S. Uh, just some more things from nature, some kind of a fun piece of wood and some shells. And then this is actually a mousetrap magnet. Um, and I was in a swap a while back, like uh, several years back. So um, this just reminds me of that group that I was once in back in the day. And I think that is it. The little altar. Hope you enjoy. I forgot one important thing. This is a little diffuser, a little essential oil diffuser that I got from another artist and I love it. It's a little bee pollinating a flower. So didn't want to forget that. And this is actually, I need to get back into it, but I used to do this ritual. Every time I would start a painting, I would come drop some essential oil onto this little guy. And that just kind of got my head saying, okay, it's time to come out, to paint, to create. <laughs> and um, then of course, some bird, little bird feathers, more nature stuff. But um, now that is officially it. I hope you guys enjoyed. Now getting back to this painting, I think this is day three or four of painting this painting. At any rate, 
I am just mixing up some custom gray colors and some custom dark grays, light grays, blacks, all the good colors. And I'm mixing that again, right on my palette. Like I said, I do. And I use several different tiny little paintbrushes throughout this painting to get different textures and different thicknesses of things like the branches and the snow on the trees, just adding a lot more dimension and depth to the painting. So sit back and enjoy watching me put in these teeny tiny little details. have not picked up the camera in several days to talk to you but I have been working on this painting and I did video some lots of little teeny tiny details and lots of layers and I now do think it is done so I'm gonna flip the camera around and I'll show you the all of the little details and get you some close-ups and all the good stuff all right so here is the finished painting and let me try to show you some of this texture on the tree, see if the camera will pick any of that up. I think it's doing a decent job. And then lots of texture down here on the snowy area. And there are the wonderful mountains in the background more trees, and there you go, the finished painting. I think this is where I'm going to leave you today. Um, thank you so much for coming along. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, don't forget, great big thumbs up. I hope you enjoyed seeing my altar slash ritual area and uh, kind of the reorganizing and recleaning of that and the things that were important to me. And I also hope it encourages you to perhaps get a small space in your studio or house and set one up because they're they're fun and it's you know always nice to have things that even it's just a little tiny space a place that has a special meaning to you i also hope you enjoyed watching this painting back here and um yeah i think that's it so thank you again for coming along if you aren't subscribed and would consider doing so i would really really appreciate it if you are subscribed but aren't getting notified and you want to get notified, click that bell down there and that will remind you every time I release a new video. We'll talk to you soon and bye for now.